Cedric Filibert. You are senior analyst in the Renewable Energy Division of the International Energy Agency. You stay in Paris, already 70 year, 17 years with the IEA, and you lead the um, policy analysis on technologies. Currently, you are working on renewable energies in industries. So you, are, you made a statement yourself that it will be very hard to decarbonize the industry and the transport sector. So why is that? For the moment, we are decarbonizing the power sector a bit of everywhere, thanks to cheap uh, wind and solar power. And this will go a long way. Uh, but then we'll have to confront the uh, heat issue and the transport issue, which are more difficult because you, uh, the, the commodity of uh, fossil fuels, of liquid fuels, uh, is great and is hard to replace. And for industries, you have problems of competitiveness, um, which makes it uh, difficult for most industries to adopt uh, fuels that are uh, even slightly more expensive than the fossil fuels they are used to. So the industry sector has 80% heat and 20% electricity. What are technologies that can help to decarbonize the manufacturers? Well, of course, you have a number of technologies for um, direct renewable heat, from solar heat to bioenergy to uh, geothermal in some cases, etc. Uh, you have a number of solutions that do not belong to renewable energy uh, stricto sensu. You have energy efficiency. And then you have uh, electrification. Uh, with electricity from renewables and also using the ambient heat, for example, with heat pumps or mechanical compression of, of vapor, uh, you can do a lot with a little electricity uh, because they are very, very effective technologies. We, you had just taken part on this conference um, in a panel which was talking about the path towards 100 renewable energies. You think this is an, a realistic target? Uh, we have to be careful with that because uh, the purpose is not to go 100% renewable in electricity. The problem is to get very high shares of renewables in all uh, consumption sectors. And because it's easier for now to go uh, to power, some people make a big focus on 100% renewable electricity. But maybe having 90% renewables in electricity and a big share of renewables in the other sector is more important for decarbonizing the uh, global economy. So I think biomass is also a kind of uh, renewable heat uh, that could be used for the industry, but we need it as well to, to eat and we need as well biofuels. There's a certain competition. What do you recommend to use biomass for? Well, of course, we, there, there, there are a number of users for biomass, including energy users that are uh, sustainable and, and affordable. Um, in the future, we'll, we'll have more advanced biofuels that will uh, rest on the uh, non-edible part of the plants. But the problem is that it's still a, a limited feedstock uh, because uh, the uh, earth is not uh, infinite and uh, it takes a lot of space to grow vegetables. So... Uh, one way uh, of interesting uh, research now is how to multiply this potential in uh, adding uh, hydrogen of renewable origin to the bioenergy uh, in the processes of making biofuels. And you can convert more carbon from the bioenergy into uh, fuels if you use that hydrogen. Just a little thinking, 2050 in a decarbonized world. Do you think we will fly to a conference like here with a biofuel-triggered airplane or we will sit in a digital room that Google gives us and we will meet in artificial chat rooms? Certainly a bit of both. We have already started doing a bit of both. Uh, flying, I think, will uh, can go with uh, biofuels. It's probably one of the uh, uses where there are hard to replace, but some people believe in electricity as well, including for flying or for uh, various forms of hydrogen. So uh, 2050 is a long time, so we'll see. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.